You see, the only way to be perfect is to walk in the presence of God. Prayer offered to the Lord from your mind simply would not be adequate. Why? Because your mind is very limited. The mind can pay attention to only one thing at a time. Prayer that comes out of the heart is not interrupted by thinking. I will go so far as to say that nothing can interrupt this prayer, the prayer of simplicity. Selfish desires can cause this prayer to cease. But even here there is encouragement, for once you have enjoyed your Lord and tasted the sweetness of his love, you will find that even your selfish desires no longer hold any power. You will find it impossible to have pleasure in anything except him. Praying the scripture is a unique way of dealing with the scripture, it involves both reading and prayer. Here is how you should begin. Turn to the scripture, choose some passage that is simply and fairly practical. Next, come to the Lord. Come quietly and humbly. There, before him, read a small portion of the passage of scripture you have opened to. You do not move from one passage to another, not until you have sensed the very heart of what you read. You may then want to take that portion of scripture that has touched you and turn it into prayers. Praying the scripture is not judged by how much you read but by the way in which you read. If you read quickly, it will benefit you little. You will be like a bee that merely skims the surface of a flower. Instead, in this new way of reading with prayer, you must become as the bee who penetrates into the depths of the flower. You plunge deeply within to remove its deepest nectar. Plunge into the very depths of the words you read until revelation, like a sweet aroma, breaks out upon you. In praying the scripture you are asking to find the Lord in what you are reading in the very words themselves. In this path, therefore, the content of the scripture is the focal point of your attention. Your purpose is to take everything from the passage that unveils the Lord to you. The mind has a very strong tendency to stray away from the Lord. Therefore, as you come before your Lord to sit in his presence, beholding him, make use of the scripture to quiet your mind. You begin by setting aside a time to be with the Lord. When you do come to him, come quietly. Turn your heart to the presence of God. How is this done? This, too, is quite simple. You turn to him by faith. By faith you believe you have come into the presence of God. You should always remember that you are not doing this to gain some understanding of what you have read. Rather, you are reading in order to turn your mind from outward things to the deep parts of your being. You are not there to learn or to read, but you are there to experience the presence of the Lord. It was Saint Augustine who once said that he had lost much time in the beginning of his Christian experience by trying to find the Lord outwardly rather than by turning inwardly. Once your heart has been turned inwardly to the Lord, you will have an impression of his presence. You will be able to notice his presence more acutely because your outer senses have now become very calm and quiet. There are two reasons that you find it easier each time to bring your mind under subjection to the Lord. One is that the mind, after much practice, will form a new habit of turning deep within. The second is that you have a gracious Lord. Your attention is no longer on outward things or on the surface thoughts of your mind, instead. Sweetly and silently, your mind become occupied with what you have read and by that touch of his presence. Do not allow your mind to wander. If your mind begins to wander, just turn your attention back again to the inward parts of your being. You will be free from wandering free from any outward distractions, and you will be brought near to God. Let us say your mind begins to wander. Once you have been deeply touched by the Lord's Spirit and are distracted, be diligent to bring your wandering mind back to the Lord. This is the easiest way in the world to overcome external distractions. When your mind has wandered, don't try to deal with it by changing what you are thinking. You see, if you pay attention to what you are thinking, you will only irritate your mind and stir it up more. Instead, withdraw from your mind. Keep turning within to the Lord's presence. 
By doing this you will win the war with your wandering mind and yet never directly engage in the battle. You need only believe that God dwells in you. This belief, and this belief alone, will bring you into his holy presence. Do not allow your mind to wander about but hold it in submission as much as possible. Pour out your heart to him as a little child pours out his heart to his father. Never doubt your Lord's deep love for you. Never doubt his desire to hear you. Call on his name and remain before him silently for a little while. Remain there, waiting to have his heart made known to you. Give yourself up to God. Give yourself to God so that he may do in your heart what you have so long been a failure in trying to do. Acknowledge before him his right to rule over you. At some point in this encounter with your Lord, you will feel deep within your spirit that it is time to simply remain silent before him. His will is that his children love him. Therefore, when you pray, Lord, your will be done, you are actually asking the Lord to allow you to love him. So begin to love him. And as you do, beseech him to give you his love. Dear child of God, all your concepts of what God is like really amount to nothing. Do not try to imagine what God is like. Instead, simply believe in his presence. Never try to imagine what God will do. There is no way God will ever fit into your concepts. What then shall you do? Seek to behold Jesus Christ by looking to him in your inmost being, in your spirit. Furthermore, your own efforts at praying will grow less and less. Eventually there will come for you that moment when he will gain complete control, when you will continually yield to God's working within you. When the presence of the Lord really becomes your experience, you will actually discover that you have gradually begun to love this silence and peaceful rest which come with his presence.